Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In today's video, we're gonna look at how to color objects using vertex maps, ramps, color user data, how to map objects the way we want, so from left to right, top to bottom. We're gonna be using fields. I found this super easy and, and this is powerful in many ways. I'm just gonna open the bridge. I'm also gonna make sure that this use node materials for preset is turned off so I can import easily from bridge. And I'm gonna upload this three branch. We always use tree branch <laughs> and this is the new one I like. Now that it's uploaded, I'm just gonna take this object out and apply the object tag, uh, redshift object tag to it and also the material. I can delete this now. So I have only this. I'm gonna switch to object mode. I'm in a point mode by default somehow. Uh, I'll take this up, scale it just so it's bigger. I already have the lighting set up in this scene. So this is my default scene with this my default lighting. I really like it. If you want to see video on how to do this type of lighting, then definitely hit, hit me up and I can create a tutorial about my favorite lighting. I'm going to import this grass, the, the desert grass. So I'm just going to import these as well. And I'm going to highlight all this grass, all the G to put it in a group call it grass and then Alt E and move this away from the screen. Now I have this grass, I can bring in metric scatter. That metric scatter, I'm gonna say that object uh, mode will be the object. So this way we can put the tree branch there and we scattering matrices on, on top of that object. So right now we have spheres, but I'm gonna go into the redshift object and change the optimized spheres to custom. And then we can click on all of the grass pieces and go back to the object tag. And we're gonna go to particles, custom object is already set. And we're just gonna drag all the grass in here. But the first bonus tip I wanna show you is really fun. So I'm gonna look at how this is rotated. Cause I wanna, I wanna have the grass appear only inside these little ridges and crevices, whatever you call it. The way we do it, we're just gonna apply a vertex map to that. You see that immediately when I apply a vertex map, I've got I've got brush and I can brush just in those ridges and crevices, just in that middle part, and that's it. So now I've painted it. What I wanna do next, create polygon selection. So the way you would go for it, it would be, um, you would go other tags and you would find polygon selection here. So polygon selection. And now with that polygon selection, I can use fields. So if I use fields, delete the freeze, and instead of any field, I'll just drag that vertex map in there. And this way, if I go to matrix and go object, and I say like, hey, this selection will be used. I'll be starting using only those ridges. So if I'm gonna go increase this to like 6,000, you see it's a bit chaotic, <laughs> but we can go to the matrix object and say scale multiplier to 0.2. And now you see I have grass only in that ridge where I painted. So this is really powerful because then you can start really seeing how you, you know I paint here and it will update instantly. Uh, I can hold control and I can just delete everything from here and I will be just scattering on that. So that's it's really powerful technique um, because you can like really control where I'm scattering the grass. What I want to show you is actually, what are we going to do first? We're going to increase the count to like, I don't know, 50,000. So we have this like a bigger patches. I'm going to paint it a little bit on top here, just so we see. I'm going to do a little bit here so we get that top. The first thing I want to show you is how do we color this then from top to bottom? Let's say I wanted to, this to be blue, this to be orange, this to be, you know, yellow. The way you would do it, you would actually open this material. I don't like to use a shader graph, so we can open Shift C Commander and we say convert uh, all materials to nodes. It will give us another two options and we say convert and replace all the materials with nodes. So this will get replaced from shader graph to actually the node editor. And I'll, I can open it in node editor. And if I go to grass, you can see there are node editor as well. We have this albedo here, but I can get rid of it. And we get this just color and we'll be using our gray color so we can change it to red. 
we can have like a different color grass. What would be the best to actually bring in data node? So color user data, it would be great because then I can apply color. And in here, I'm going to say use MoGraph color. And now this will give us the power of MoGraph. I can apply the plane effector to our matrix object. And because we have use uh, in a plane effector, we can use fields. I can bring in linear field. And now this is colored. So I can go gradient and maybe select purple, my favorite. And now I have the top. So I can check that linear field. I can press scale and scale it down. And this is already starting to create uh, nice effects. But the first, let me go to parameters of that plane effector and turn off the position. Let's still play with the gradient only. And we go back to fields and we see that we have that gradient here. We can bring in the orange color as promised and we can drag it on and this will give us nice gradient. So I can get rid of this white one completely. And we're going to have nice gradient coming from purple to orange. And, and we can bring in any color this way and we can remap so we can really just play with the strength of the remap and, and bring it even more, more pronounced, less pronounced, it depending on what you're looking for. But this is really powerful way how to color grass and multiple objects across the whole scene. So if you have a big grassland, um, this is the great way. The next thing I wanted to show you is how to apply color to the objects from left to right the same way, but this will, we're just gonna use a ramp. So if I would create new material, let's say I'm gonna uh, take this cylinder and I'm just gonna reduce the scale of it. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go to object parameters. I'm gonna make it just this kind of tiny. Now, I'm just gonna place it behind it. And that cylinder, I'm just going to increase the rotation segment just so it's nice and rounded. And I'm going to apply new material to it. So it's going to be standard material. And that cylinder will get applied. So now I have the node material because I, it's faster for me. I can, I can just double click, bring any textures. So texture, or actually, let's bring ramp and plug it into color. And now I have the purple to orange, but I can swap it and I'm like, I don't want it this way. I want to just have it horizontally. And then you can like place horizontal. You say, I, I don't want it this way as well. So I just want to kind of apply it in a, in a different way. So I just want to have it vertical, but kind of angled. And this is where you start to kind of run into these, where you, where you need to twist, where you need to twist the object. And sometimes it's, it's not practical for us to rotate the object. So what you can do, you can go back to that material, bring in vertex map, uh, vertex attribute, plug in the color into the alt input. And now it, it's kind of reset uh, the whole parameter and we can bring the vertex map. We can says use field linear. And now this got mapped across our object. So we have this kind of, I can go back to that material and drag this into the vertex map. And now I'm mapping with our linear field, which is again, super powerful. I don't need to move anything. I can uh, even change the, the way it's scaled by just increasing the size of this. It was something that I wanted to share because I think it's extremely powerful that you can uh, quickly control all your color, color ramps and and the last thing I want to show you is actually how I created this mirror. So metalness to full, we can get rid of that color, bring it to white, get rid of the roughness at all. And we have the mirror. I can highlight the cylinder, rotate it a bit. And in my example, I was even using this mirror and um, applying it to like flakes or flakes. I think you can do flakes normal as well into like bump. And then you apply the flakes to it. So if I look at the flakes node and I decrease the density, and I have the flakes, very small scale. And there you go. So sometimes you will see those resets because this is procedural way of doing it. So this stack is basically saying, hey, 
this is uh, where the everything should be scattered on and the information is from the vertex map which is proceduralist way like you can always click into vertex map which will give you that paintbrush again and you can paint more and you know say i don't want top at all i just want it to be here in the middle so you can always repaint so now the reason why this technique is good for you is because uh you see i have this uh, polestar car divided into each different sections and i have the metallic section where hit the back trunk doors and all 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 metallic parts uh in one group and if i apply material a standard to it and let's say I'm just gonna bring in node editor and plug in ramp and plug it into our color. So now I have uh, this purple and this orange. And as you can see, each part in that group will get distributed this differently. So it's really depending on how you use your uh, projection and if you use cubic, it will be different. And so this is much better. Uh, this is much more close to, but we have no control over. So if you have multiple parts, it's much better for us to just go ramp vertex attribute and plug that into alt input. And this will, we need to switch back UVW mapping. And now I can apply this into connect object and that connect object can have this vertex map and once you have the vertex map you will see the usual and and then we can bring in linear field and you can start mapping the gradient onto the car only thing you need to do you need to go to your vertex attribute and bring that vertex map and i always forget that and now you have full control of gradient and you can just go top to bottom you can scale the gradient um, easily you can create it more narrow and you can start really coloring coloring your scene you know with much precision and anytime you will be moving the car you can simply make that linear field you know a child of a null so when, whenever you start moving stuff or uh, you start moving car that field will move with it and they uh, they become child of those objects by default. So if I move the car, everything stays because the field is moving with it. So I think this is really powerful way to color your objects. So I hope you find it useful and thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.